In this recording, we're going to talk about what are average costs, what are marginal cost, what is the relationship between the average cost and the marginal cost, and how can you write output elasticity in terms of average cost and the marginal cost. So let me just define these terms first. What is an average cost? Average cost is the total cost that the firm is going to incur per unit of output. The total cost that the firm incurs per unit of output. So basically what your AC is, that is total cost upon Q, number of units which you are producing, right? Marginal costs, this is the rate at which the total cost increases when firm is going to produce one more unit of output. So as the as output is going to increase by one more unit, what is the addition to the total cost? That is what the marginal cost is. The rate at which total cost increases as the firm produces one more unit of output, right? As the firm is going to produce one more unit of output. So MC is del of the total cost by del Q. That is what MC is, right? That is what MC is. So we can also uh, look at the relationship between the AC and MC, right? Well, mathematically, how you can write, of course, you can write your AC as TC upon Q. So del AC by del Q. You want to minimize the average cost. So del AC by del Q is going to be what? So how you can write that? Q, denominator as it is, I'm using the quotient rule, into the derivative of numerator, del TC upon del Q, minus numerator as it is, <clears throat> into the derivative of denominator with respect to Q, upon Q square upon Q square. Now for minimum you would need del AC by del Q to be equal to 0 and this will be equal to 0 if this thing is going to be equal to 0 right that would mean del TC by del Q is equal to TC upon Q. But this would mean what? That MC is equal to AC. That is at the minimum point of the AC curve, MC is equal to AC. At the minimum point of the AC curve, MC is equal to AC. Right. So, You have output out here, you have MC and AC out here, right? You have the average cost curve like this. The minimum of average cost curve lies here somewhere. So you can draw the marginal cost curve like this. Right. So at the minimum of 
AC, MC is equal to AC. At the as the min at the minimum of AC, your MC is equal to AC. <coughs> right. So so Achha, one more thing is that your MC is nothing but the slope of the AC curve. So when AC is uh, increasing, the slope must be positive, right? And when a when sorry, slope of the TC curve. So when TC is increasing, the slope must be increasing. When TC is falling, slope must be falling, right? Okay, fair enough. So you have like this. So when uh, you can also write the relationship uh, between these two things in in the following way, please like this, right? Initially, you know what I mean. I can also draw my MC in this fashion. I can draw my MC like this, something like this. Uh, that is, I'm just trying to say that. Uh, Initially, we might start with the positioning that your AC and MC is equal for the first unit of output, right? So you can just write that. Average cost. Start being equal to the marginal cost. for the first unit of hope, right? Start out being equal to the marginal cost for the first unit of output. So as output is expanding, your AC is greater than MC. That also you can see. Because, uh, and why do you think that AC is more than MC as the output is, ex output is expanding? Because AC is reflecting the last unit also and all the previous units also, right? So AC is uh, reflecting because AC. Reflects. both the marginal cost of the last unit produced and the higher marginal cost of the previously produced of the previously produced units. So, this is for when AC is greater than AC. This is for when AC is greater than MC, right? Because the newly produced units cost, I mean, they are below, I mean, the cost of the newly produced unit is below the average cost here in this case. So, what they're going to do, they're going to pull the average cost downwards because the lower costs of the newly produced units
are below average cost they continue to pull average cost downwards they continue to pull average cost downwards right uh, so marginal costs are, are are rising up of course ac is falling 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 but at this particular point let's say at this point q star your marginal cost is equal to the average cost so marginal cost rise So marginal cost was also falling till this point, but then they started rising eventually. And eventually they are equal at point Q star. Marginal cost rise. However, And eventually, they are equal at Q star to the average costs. To the average cost. Now, beyond this point, if you can see, your MC is greater than AC. So, the cost of the newly produced units is more than AC. So, they are going to pull the average cost upwards. Beyond Q star, MC is greater than AC. And AC will be rising. And AC will be rising. because they are being pulled upward by an increasingly higher marginal cost, right? So, After Q star, the cost of the new units is getting higher. And because of that, your MC is beyond AC and this higher MC is pulling the AC up. This higher MC is pulling the AC up. Uh, so, and this particular point, hmm, this Q star where AC and MC are intersecting, that is also called the minimum efficient scale, this Q star. So I'll come back to this particular point where, I mean, in I think in perfect competition class, minimum efficient scale. Minimum efficient scale. Uh, okay, so this is about the relationship between AC and MC. Look at uh, one numerical example so that uh, it becomes clear to you. So you have the total cost function y square plus 10y plus 25. y is greater than zero. So you have to show this that M C, when MC is less than AC, AC is falling. When MC is equal to AC, at that point AC is uh, minimum. And when MC is going to exceed AC, AC is increasing. This is what you want to show, right? So this is what you wanted to show. So let us say, let's just solve this here. So you have MCY is going to be 2Y plus 10. 
acy is going to be y square plus 10y plus 25 upon y. So that is y plus 10 plus 25 upon y. And what is the derivative of ac? Right, that is going to be 1 minus 25 by y square. And when is this del ac by del y is going to be equal to 0? It's going to be like this. And y is equal to plus minus 5. But I'll just put it equal to 5. Uh, because we have assumed that y is greater than 0. Because we have assumed that y is greater than 0. Right. So the AC curve is horizontal at this particular point. AC curve is horizontal at this particular point. So what is MC at 5 units? 2 into y. y is 5 out here. Plus. Plus. Plus 10. Which is. 20. Okay. What is AC at 5 units? 5 plus 10 plus 25 by 5. That is 20 now. This is 5. 5 plus 5, 10. 10 plus 10, 20. So, when AC is at its minimum, so this point has proved what? When AC is at its minimum, MC is equal to AC. When AC is at its minimum, MC is equal to AC. Okay. Now, MC is less than AC when 2Y plus 10 is less than y plus 10 plus 25 by y, right? You just uh, calculate this. This will be 2y minus y, y. This 10, 10 will get cancelled out and minus 25 by y, right? Or you can just write it like y less than 25 by y. So you have y square less than 25. So basically you have y less than 5. We have assumed y, y is uh, positive, right? So we are only going to take up a y less than 5, right? So when your, when you are below this minimum point, so in our example, this is what y equals to 5 is. So at y equals to 5, MC is equal to AC. That's what you have established. Huh? That's what you have established. When Y is equal to 5, MC is equal to AC. Then, for this region, Y is less than 5. And what is it that you have established? MC is less than AC. That's what it is. MC is less than AC. Similarly, you can also show that for this region, this region. This is y greater than 5 region. You guys can see that mc is greater than ac. mc is greater than ac. Okay. So, I'll stop out here. Although I thought that I'll do output elasticity in this recording only, I'll do that in the next recording. Right. So, uh, I'll be doing the relationship of ac and mc with output elasticity in the next recording. Thank you, Vita.